Let me paint a couple of scenarios. It's a beautiful summer day. You decide to fire up the grill, throw on a couple of burgers and brats, and while the fire is doing its job, what better way for you to enjoy that time than to crack open an ice cold beer? Here's another one. It's Friday, and for those of us that work that nine to five grind, it's the start of the weekend. And after a grueling week of work, what better way to get that weekend started than with a little happy hour? Sunday morning rolls around, and you're a bit foggy from the night before. So you decide to soak up some of that sauce with a big old breakfast, or maybe even brunch, and perhaps even a little hair of the dog. There's a common thread here, and that thread has sewn its way deep into the very fabric of our society. Of course, I'm referring to alcohol. The ability to purchase alcohol itself is seen by many as a rite of passage. 16, 18, and 21. These are the big milestone birthdays for many. And in my generation, and certainly prior, turning 21 was the birthday that we all very much looked forward to, seen as the true sign of adulthood. And of course, no longer having to swipe from our parents' liquor cabinets. I grew up around friends and family, where at every get together, nearly every adult had a beer, wine, or spirit in hand. In fact, it was the ones that didn't have those in hand that I was more inquisitive about. I would ask my dad, hey, what's O'Doul's? And how come only one of your brothers drinks it? When I was in high school, was the first time that I was presented with that choice, to partake in underage drinking. I did, and I did it often. Now maybe it was the rebellion that made it taste that much sweeter, but at the time, it felt good. And I felt like I had to build up my tolerance early as to not be seen as a lightweight. When I turned 21, bar life became my after hours go-to. No matter if I got off work at five or midnight, you could almost always count on seeing me at the bar afterwards. Now in my 30s, a stiff drink is almost always a guarantee when getting together with old friends, going out to dinner with my wife, or even just sitting down at home and watching a hockey game. Sometimes too, just to take the edge off after a rough day at work. Alcohol is so deeply ingrained in every aspect of American culture. The marketing itself is always shoved right in front of our faces. While the law says you have to be 21 to purchase, the ad space does not discriminate age. In fact, a favorite childhood destination, Grant's Farm, is just a free beer advertisement for one of the world's largest breweries disguised as a petting zoo. As someone who has used alcohol for a good majority of my life at this point, now in my 30s, I find myself reevaluating my relationship with the substance. I've been isolating my use to only on the weekends, but even then, I find myself falling into that trap of just one more. And while I do enjoy the very complex flavor profiles of different beer and spirits, I do find myself, far too often than I care to admit, drinking just to take the edge off, a bit too far off. As I've navigated this first month of sobriety, I realize just how many events and occasions have alcohol featured prominently. It's often so much easier to find 20 different varieties of a sour beer than to find just one good tea that I'm looking for. This isn't a soapbox by any means. When I started my current break, it was with the intention of better understanding my relationship with alcohol. Whether that becomes more moderation or a complete break and true sobriety remains to be seen. I know plenty of people that live fulfilling and very healthy lifestyles while still enjoying alcohol in those safe and moderate levels. I just find it incredibly fascinating just how much alcohol influences and is a part of everyday society. Now too, I know that I'm not alone. I've noticed there has been a pretty significant shift recently with less people drinking and turning to alcohol. A lot of these larger breweries are feeling the pressure from a lot of the smaller players in the game to create better tasting and different options for people that don't want to drink alcohol in public places. And it truly doesn't matter if they don't want to, choose not to, it's a religious thing, or maybe they just want to take a break and not have an alcoholic beverage that particular day, but maybe in a couple other days they will. It's always interesting to see these generational shifts happen in real time. We've already seen it with cigarette smoking. Just because something has had a stranglehold on society for such a long time, doesn't mean that it's going to be permanent. How do you feel about alcohol and brand presence in our society? Do you think too that alcohol is going to suffer a similar fate to cigarettes and soon become more of a taboo than an acceptance? I'd love to hear more from your perspective, whether you are a drinker or not. Always remember, no matter where you are, we're all living some type life. Later.